Hey guys, welcome to Digital Empaths. We are your hosts, Sushant Ajmani. And Sundar Balakrishnan. So guys, we are really uh, happy to have uh, a new guest in our episode today. His name is Vivek Jalan, uh, who is a director with RGF Executive Search. I'm not sure whether our listeners know about RGF or not. So RGF uh, Executive Search is an arm of the Recruit Holding Group, which is a $10 billion entity based out of Japan. And uh, so RGF has a pretty strong penetration in the human resources as well as information services sector. And our guest, Vivek, uh, has been working with the company for over a decade now and uh, look after the three main sectors, uh, the real estate, uh, the transportation, and the logistics. So Vivek, are you there? Yes. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen, and uh, to all the listeners, wherever they may be. Okay. Thanks, uh, Vivek. Uh, first of all, I know it's a weekend, and thanks for taking out time from your busy schedule. Yeah. So, yeah. so, Vivek, uh, there is a general trend we are seeing lately, I think, suddenly after the outbreak of COVID-19 in our country yeah. and the rest of the world. I think right now there are more than 200 countries that have been impacted, and that the numbers are quite staggering. I think we are, I think latest numbers are like 1.7 million people have been infected and close to over 100k deaths have happened across the world. So, yeah. so definitely there's a lot of fear, a lot of skepticism is there. People are really worried. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of ambiguity is there. And yeah. someone like you who's been working in the executive search firm and have been following this sector for a while now that how the different uh, industries try to evolve or try to adapt in these kind of situations in the last uh, decade or so. So what's your take? Sure, sure, sure. Sure, super. So thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, question. And thank you for having me in this session here. Um, so, you know, uh, gentlemen, I think the way I view it is, um, uh, you know, all of this, uh, you know, is, is pretty sudden. I think uh, none of, no, n nobody really had a heads up to what has just happened and has panned out over the last uh, maybe eight to 10 weeks in different parts of the world, uh, including, uh, you know, developed countries and India. Um, I think businesses uh, are, you know, um, you know, there are two perspectives. Of course, people are wary about, uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, increasing spread of this uh, virus and this disease. Um, but on the, other, on the other hand, businesses are currently in a wait and watch mode. I think um, they are trying to ensure that there is a little bit of what you may call business continuity that happens, uh, you know, given the disruption that has happened of uh, people and movement and, and uh, you know, all other activities around it. Uh, so I think uh, the, right now businesses are at a stage where they are sort of following a wait and watch approach and uh, there are new strategies that are being devised to manage uh, this entire uh, current situation yeah so that's that's my take uh, specifically on what's what's happening at this point in time okay and in your experience i know you work predominantly in the real estate transportation and logistics and i think these are the three sectors which i feel somehow the lifeline of any developing country, especially uh, housing sector has already been going down for the last few years. And uh, especially the transportation and logistics for a service company like India or even China, I think whenever the supply chains get hit, I think it yeah. really impacts the, the uh, causes unemployment across the sectors. And I think some of yeah. the latest number that I'm seeing in India, I think the unemployment rate is right now currently standing at somewhere around 23.7%. And which was in February somewhere around 8.5, 8.6. But I think it's suddenly a uh, shooter. And yeah. uh, even the US market is showing a similar signs where the unemployment is right now around 14.7%. I think last week itself, 6.6 .6 million unemployment claims have been submitted at the labor department. So, so, sure. so what's your take? Uh, how, how are these things are going to evolve? Sure, sure, sure. So I think, um, gentlemen, again, here... Um, you know, I think what what uh, is important to note is is the demographics of each of the countries uh, that that you just mentioned uh, with uh, the additional data that you just gave to support that. 
I think the demographics of uh, specific countries, um, also the um, the density of uh, population in these countries would determine, um, you know, the unemployment trends. Um, I think, uh, you know, businesses, uh, there are several overarching uh, developments that led to, um, led to, uh, you know, a certain increase that you may have seen in employment over the last couple of years. A lot of it is also driven by, um, uh, you know, by performance of stock markets, you know, globally, I think the markets have done well, specifically equity markets in America and other developed countries, including markets in India. So people built uh, additional uh, capabilities, additional capacities, hired in excess. Um, and, and, you know, um, the way we see it is they overestimated, uh, you know, uh, this bull run across markets and wanted to sort of ride the big wave. Um, but I, I think what will happen now is some of that, that will have to be revisited. Also companies that, you know, that borrowed capital to run their uh, run or chase this expansion, they would see a little bit of a setback. Um, hence, um, you know, unemployment may be a little on the rise. Um, but, you know, the way one can also view this is some of it is really what I, you know, what I would call trimming the fat. Um, I think in a country like India, where you tend to, you know, have access to, uh, uh, you know, people, personnel, labor, and, uh, you know, the corresponding costs associated with that. Uh, I think that will see a bit of a uh, hit in India. Uh, but in even developed countries, what one would see is that there's another uh, important trend. Uh, you know, there's a lot of localization, a lot of protectionism that has come up in most countries. Um, you may have seen that a lot of countries now do not want migrant workers to, you know, come in it, unless they are exceptionally, uh, uh, you know, uh, gifted or bring in a certain talent or a skill which is not locally available in the country. So I think uh, this theme will just continue to uh, uh, get, ex you know, it will get accentuated a little more in a current time like now. So that's, uh, that's a quick one on how unemployment, uh, you know, will uh, sort of uh, go up a little. Um, but yes, I think uh, people will have to manage uh, this, uh, you know, will have to, uh, there's no uh, denying the fact that you'll have to go through a little bit of a period of grief but uh, you'll have to then pull yourself back, uh, you know, and, and uh, resurrect yourself and come back uh, more positively to see what new opportunities will uh, come up uh, as a result of the situation. Okay. Okay. And uh, interesting. So based on your experience, what sectors are showing a, a, a lot of resilience and responsiveness? Because I don't believe every sector is going to be impacted significantly because of this outbreak. I'm sure there are certain sectors which are maybe well prepared or already had the resilience in place to manage these kind of outbreaks. So based on your experience, what sectors are they? Sure. I think, um, you know, uh, so sectors that have shown resilience, some amount of uh, readiness, um, you know, perhaps not as a result of, of this outbreak, but uh, as a growing trend over the last four or five years, would we say sectors like fintech, I think fintech has done phenomenally well to uh, enable payments online. Um, you know, companies that uh, that are in the IT infrastructure management services, uh, companies who uh, who uh, you know offer things like robotic process automation, or 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 some of those things have ensured that you know one could um, get some of this assistance uh, even remotely. Um, healthcare, insurance, some of these sectors will also look up uh, because I think uh, in a time like now, um, I think um, a penetration of some of these things, especially insurance, will go up. And, you know, we would see newer products coming out in the market, newer riders being added to insurance uh, policies, and the overall healthcare ecosystem will get a, get a bit of a boost. And then, okay. you know, and then on the other side, what do you think are the sectors that are going to see, you know, an impact on the financials? And the second part to that question, probably, 
for in those sectors can the sectors learn something from let's say past you know experiences of let's say the subprime crisis and other situations where there was loss of jobs or there was a strain on employment is there some lessons that can be yeah. learned from those experiences sure absolutely so you know two major uh, industries uh, i would uh, say will be impacted and like you said the financials will get impacted one of which is the manufacturing sector in general i think um, you know the manufacturing sector is is run on a heavy dose of uh, equity and debt and uh, you know what one sees is uh, there's a huge uh, uh, element of debt that uh, that is uh, taken on the books of most companies um, and that will definitely see a huge hit on the on the financials uh, some of these companies are not necessarily very high ebitda businesses and hence uh, that that will take a bit of a hit um the other sector which i think uh, you know will will take a hit and will benefit from this situation is the financial services world uh, like you mentioned rightly you know we did see a bit of a meltdown uh, you know in the subprime crisis etc i think what one essentially saw is that developed countries have this penchant to um, to um, create uh, complex capital market products and uh, and uh, you know and uh, and uh, you know and essentially some of these could be classified as high risk high reward products right. i think what will happen after this uh, situation is that the general sense uh, towards uh, you know the you know all the exotic capital market products would you know sort of go out of the window briefly i, I think uh, people would start looking at things like savings savings will get a huge boost the deposits in banks will go up uh, all the other uh, traditional uh, products that gave um, a stable uh, return without exposure to markets would get a huge boost um, investments in uh, mutual funds uh, you know uh, and uh, you know sort of participation in equity markets would go up because as you see currently um, all all around the globe the equity markets uh, you know are, are cut off are shaved off by 30 40% i think it's a great time to enter equity markets over the long run so yes these are two three sectors which would see a huge hit uh, to their financials uh, both for the good and the bad interesting interesting you mentioned that i think one of the outcomes of this is going to be that a general sense of a longer term vision for both your finances personal as well as organizational finances is something that could come into play uh maybe as a segue to that i know it's difficult to predict what is the new normal going to be but if one yeah. would you like to hazard a guess and two yeah. out of that yeah. new normal will there be maybe yeah. new roles new processes new products is something that you probably mentioned but how do you see that yeah. dynamic yeah. changing sure sure absolutely i think see one of the things to sort of support the what what you said is uh, is going to be the new normal would clearly be what uh, some of us are doing very successfully already which is work from home i think uh, this whole uh, drill of uh, going to a workplace uh, five days a week um, and spending you know 8 10 hours uh, at a workplace i think those concepts will get redefined um, uh, a lot of that will be enabled by uh, technology so i think uh, companies uh, that are going to enable work from home uh, and help companies uh, you know put in a a bcp in place a business continuity plan in place would do well um i uh, i think the you know the, there'll be a general sort of thrust on essentials i think um, the new normal will also be to sort of uh, do away with things that you know that are maybe considered non essentials or or for lack of a better word say ostentatious by or things that you know you don't need necessarily a lot of focus uh, you know would would sort of get driven to uh, essential needs right that that will be uh, a new normal travel and tourism will be hit in a big way um, uh, you know because i think people will now start practicing a little bit of what one calls social distancing um, you know while we are in the middle of a pandemic currently we don't know what, what will unfold tomorrow uh, uh, you know and what new um, crisis uh, may come up so i think the you know everyone's going to be wary about uh, you know about uh, about how they go about doing business and leading their lives so yes i think um, 
both on the personal and the professional front i think um, uh, people would sort of pause a little before they do things and i also see that there is going to be uh, a huge opportunity for edtech companies companies that deliver education online to sort of further yes. spring up their the growth story that they've been going through uh, sure absolutely yeah i think see edtech would take a huge uh, you know the leg up i think it will get a lot of leg up um you know however you know i was i was talking to another i, I was attending another uh, you know um, Uh, webinar uh, with another speaker uh, who is an entrepreneur in running education businesses in the middle east um, and he mentioned a very interesting uh, point look i think um, there's more to education than just the academic curriculum i think um, uh, physical infrastructure uh, schools um, the social setting that uh, kids get at a school uh, things like competitiveness in writing or doing uh, you know uh, in studies or academics all that is a very important element of overall uh, you know education uh, as as a concept and i think that will not get replaced so i think schools will continue to remain and uh, you know um, and the whole opportunity to interact with people socially and build your uh, other skills uh, would be just as uh, important uh, as much as uh, it you know it will be to uh, uh, sort of spruce up your So, so Vivek, uh, if we have to ask you, uh, what are your two big bets for 2020 uh, in terms of what sectors are going to sh- be doing really, really well in the coming two quarters? And uh, according to you, what kind of interesting trends we should be looking up? Sure. So, you know, two big bets, uh, uh, Sushant, would be, um, I think. Um, supply chain as a concept would get redefined in most companies um because i think what we've seen traditionally is people have always spoken about just in time and lean uh, you know inventory etc i think what one realizes is that that whole concept will have to be revisited a little uh, as a result of which um you know uh, logistics warehousing some of those sectors would really do well um yeah that's uh, that's on the sector i think the other sector that will do well is um, is anything which is uh, at the intersection of uh, a user uh, you know uh, uh, you know technology and payments technology and payments and uh, technology and um, and uh, other 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 things that technology can enable including work from home etc right so those are two big uh, industries that will do well uh, i think from a concept perspective what will change uh, you know going forward my sense is that look i think one of the biggest concerns for people is uh, is you know is whether the essentials are getting delivered to the larger community right be it in india be it in any other country and how are we addressing the needs of the poor right be it basics right food etc so i think an overall um, focus on equal distribution of income or cash to people i think taxation will change in a big way uh, the affluent uh, and the rich would get taxed a little more and uh, governments would strive to uh, put more money in the hands of the uh, people at the bottom of the pyramid okay okay that's interesting and what would you uh, recommend to all those executives i know you are a part of executive firm and you deal with a lot of c level executives you guys also place board of directors also so yeah. the all those executives who have recently lost their jobs or some of the mid management executives what what would what would be your recommendation how they can plan for the coming quarters how they can cope up this kind of a uh, distress environment sure, sure and maybe vivek if so, i can just add to that how much yeah. of reskilling is going to be an important component to all of that you know that shant asked sure sure so i'll address both these uh, questions the first is about uh, unemployment look i think uh, it's very clear you know there will be job losses there will be a bit of an unemployment and you know uh, as much as i may put it very lightly saying it's a little bit of trimming of the fat the fact is that some people will be let go what one has to do is of course take it on the shin um, you know there's not much one can do about it it's very important that you go through a little bit of that grief period um i think what people tend to do is 
people are obsessed with continuity of uh, you know of events you know you tend to study educate you want to finish that immediately get a job and move on to the next job there's no no time given to you uh, to introspect on what you need to do for the next 5 years or 10 years right even elements like you just mentioned sandha which is reskilling i think this is uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, to sort of go through that uh, you know grief period uh, pull yourself uh, you know up take it on the shin understand you know what new what is the new world order and what new skills are required which can be in adjacent areas to your own area of expertise and acquire some of those skills through training um and uh, and a very sort of uh, give it give it like a few months maybe say 3 4 5 months um uh, and then ensure that you take up something which you know which is going to be a uh, uh, going to fit into the natural scheme of things for you uh we are be looking at opportunities or jobs as uh, as stop gap arrangements because i think what a lot of people i tend to see doing is they pick up you know when they lose jobs uh, they tend to pick up things uh, on the fly which is a bit unhealthy because they are stop gap arrangements and that's neither good you know uh, that's not reflecting well on the job chain index of the executive and nor does it do any good to the company so i think a little bit of introspection preparation going back you know reskilled and a little no more sure about how you want to spend the next few years is very critical cool i think that's really good to know and the last thing i want to ask before we conclude this topic i know uh, vivek you spend a lot of time with some of the c level executives and so if i have to tell ask you what are those top 3 skills of future are going to be i know technology has always been there we are talking about ai ml robotic process automation there are a lot of big buzz words we talk about but i'm sure there are yeah. other softer skills that that executives might be lacking that they might not be given yeah. a higher importance to so what would be those top yeah. three skills that we should be looking after sure see the immediate uh, you know top skill i would say is also i think the name of your of your channel uh, you know which is empathy i think empathy is going to be a very important element uh, from a soft skill perspective because um, i think one has to respect that um, there is uh, a large community of people working uh, towards a common organizational goal but sitting you know coming from different backgrounds different canvases sitting in different locations uh, you know etc so um, and a life situation so you you know empathy is a very important element i think Uh, leadership teams uh, you know owners of businesses uh, will have to factor that in a little more empathy and what you would call the humane aspect of, of uh, running businesses because you run them with people that's a huge skill um second one i think would be again a word that you used earlier in the conversation which is resilience resilience to change resilience to situations and uh, your ability to fight back come what may i think uh, ability to give your 100% and try and look out of the box uh, uh uh you know towards the same you know problems that's going to be a important skill um i think uh, you know a third skill would really be uh, i won't necessarily call it a skill but i think you need to be a little bit cool headed and you know and and sort of be a little light hearted about things you have to have your um, heart and your uh, you know and your mind in the right place because only if you can think uh calmly you can you can apply yourself and be uh, in the moment and then plan for the future i think it's very important to you know gather your gather yourself and be very composed uh and and then be able to think with a straight mind wonderful wonderful thank thanks vivek thanks for taking out time for our episode today and uh, i hope our listeners might have benefited from your words of wisdom and they'll take some uh, ray of hope i think not everything that looks bad is going to be bad in the coming quarters there will be some amount of unemployment there will be some sector which might be impacted but it should not be that significant that people should feel more restless and anxious at this stage so again i am thanking all our listeners who are watching this episode right now and uh, we would like to request you if you have any questions any comments please post it below this video and any new recommendations on any new topic that you want us to cover in the coming episodes will be more than happy